Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was the collar bomb bank robbery. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page. This is the second postmortem on the new channel, which if you're watching this video right now and you haven't subscribed, you should subscribe on it. What are you to the doing link right here. Come you know. on. We're shooting these on Friday. <laughs> and let me tell you, feels good. Yeah. Yeah, we usually shoot these on Monday mornings, uh, Friday, all season. Yeah, all, so it's uh, gonna have a loose vibe. So you know, we, usually we're in here, we're like, I don't know, we're answering some questions. We yeah, we turn into Clint Eastwood and we <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Lexi Taylor, for postmortem, what exactly did Wells do to want people to kill him so bad? I'd like to see an episode about that. Love you guys. Oh, this is kind of you to say. Uh, was he a D-bag? No, he was a, for a, by all accounts, he was a very docile man that just kind of kept himself, didn't have many friends. This is actually not in the episode, like I mentioned before. Jessica Hoopsick said she mentioned uh, his name to Kenneth Barnes. As a, as a patsy. I do believe that to be true. I don't understand why she would lie about that. Oh. So it's not so much that he didn't, he did something that made people want to kill him. It's just that they needed a patsy. They needed somebody to take the fall yeah. and, and die. You know what? And he, he fit the bill, which is sad. Why don't you go over to Graham Town? I'll take it over again. It's, it's a little brighter over there. It was from the Minty Minsuga. All right. To start this off, I loved the video. I wish I had some za for my day. I had all four wisdom teeth removed today, still recovering, but watching a new true crime really made my day as I sat with ice packs and stuffed my face with chocolate ice cream and mac and cheese. Not too vigorously, unfortunately. Thanks for the new content, and I'm looking forward to postmortem to save me from this hashtag Shaniacs. P.S. Love you too, Ryan. Not really a question, just nice to hear from a fan. Yeah, also impressive that you were able to write up a question while you were the day of of, a, of wisdom teeth surgery. Four wisdom teeth, that's nothing That's nothing to sniff at. Mac and cheese and chocolate, weird choice, I will say that, but that could be just the wisdom. I mean, I trust they're not spooning it like mac and cheese, chocolate ice cream. I don't cream. know. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the whole putting you under thing makes you get a little loopy. Who knows? Uh, moving on to Facebook, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay Urich? Yeah. For postmortem, do you think Wells had gone into shock? I've seen cases where a traumatic event happens to someone and they don't seem to be affected by it at all. This could explain why Wells was so calm when he went into the bank, because he couldn't fully register what had happened to him. This is, of course, referring to Wells' uh, cool as a cucumber state when he goes yeah. into the bank. I, I had wondered about this too, and I've thought about it. And the, more, and the more I think about it, it is very odd for me that he was so calm. I don't know, but people respond to um, trauma in different ways. Perhaps. Especially if, like this in particular, sure, they put a bomb around him. Mm -hmm. You know, you got a bomb around you, they say, oh, the bomb's gonna explode. You don't know for sure if they're telling the truth. So you're probably very, very concerned. Well, I'm definitely not gonna hedge my bets that they're not telling the truth. I'm gonna, you know, proceed with some, uh, you know, I'm gonna go as fast as I possibly can. Yeah. And that even in, and even in just that, just trying to move as quickly as you can through the task, you're gonna come off as not calm. What if it actually did have an effect on him and the effect was that he was calm and collected? He goes If he was like, like, look, the only way I'm gonna pull this off is if I just keep my fucking shit together. I I'm sorry, I didn't mean to swear. All right, where right. we go? Let's go back to Grahamtown, huh? Here's from Gretchen O'Neill. The most jarring fact in this ep was that they referred to McDonald's as a restaurant. Ha! <laughs> oh, Boom. who's got them? Who's over here, huh? Who's? Oh, I didn't realize Gordon Ramsay was uh, submitting Q and A's yeah. over here. Yeah, I mean, I, you know what? Who are you over here with on your bad. sitting on your high horse, too good for a chicken nugget? Also, you're you're protecting your protecting. I'm protecting. McD's. You're protecting Mickey your, D's, baby. I think Shane's in the pocket of Big McDonald's. That's what I think. I'd love to be. Ronald. Reach out and just DM me or something. He's a fictional character. Do you imagine Ronald's in a business suit over at McDonald's headquarters to take him? God, that'd be terrifying. <laughs> Ronald, Shane's on the phone for you, Shane Madey. You have your uh, annual review with uh, Ronald. <laughs> oh my God, that would be horrifying. He just, just sits across the table from you and just ever not present smiling, grin. but just, the grin is painted just on. Just ever present painted on grin. Which is just a metaphor for corporate, just like interactions anyway. I really like the way you defended us in that postmortem. <laughs> Let's get back to Facebook. Okay. 
Uh, this comes from Teresa Master Donato. Oh, oh, Teresa! That's a fun name. I wonder why it took the bomb squad so long to get to them. Was there another bomb incident going on at the same time? <laughs> the graphics you used made it look like the police were just standing around having a nice chat with each other. I'm sure that's not what happened. From what I read, it seems like the police were trying to confirm that this man was not insane and that he actually had a bomb on his, you know, collar. It seems like a weird risk to take, to just, like, just get, just call out the bomb boys. Like, how often are they getting bomb threats that they gotta be like, where's the robot? Where, where do we hey, put what the is robot? The, that's true, what is the bomb squad doing on a daily basis in Erie, yeah. Pennsylvania? They're fucking chilling. They're bro. waiting, they're, they're like, waiting for one call. This is a sweet gig, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Not a lot going on in this town. Let's order some some uh, nachos. <laughs> Let's get those. <laughs> they probably got a book club and everything. They got, like, They're probably the most well-read uh, law enforcers in town. They're probably like sitting in the facility and they're like, "What's that noise? Is it? Is that the? Is that a phone? Do do we have to? Do we have to do work? Do, this is the bomb." What? <laughs> a bomb? Oh. 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 oh, oh, this is it, boys. Oh, just like we practiced. What's a robot? What do you mean it's out of batteries? This is from Amy Nielsen. <laughs> You're kidding me, right? Just watch the Netflix doc, Evil Genius. It came out a few months ago. It's incredible. We're not kidding you, Amy. <laughs> We're not kidding you, Amy. We made a video on it. Uh, it's you know, fully produced. It is. It is, you watched it, I think. Uh, it is on the, on, on the, on bun. You know, here's the thing. I think the Evil Genius special is great. I think you should, if you watch this episode and you're like, man, I wish I knew more. This is the, Evil Genius is a great companion piece to this. In fact, I would say that we're a better companion piece because they covered it more uh, in depth. We did it broad strokes. Are there as many yucks on that one? No, there is not. Because we, the, the BuzzFeed Unsolved difference is you're going to get those yucks. You're going to yuck it up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Unfortunately, sometimes it's not um, appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you recall, last week, and as we're doing all season, we're really gearing up for Bergara Guitarra. We're which, not. which is a big, um, a big thing that's going to happen at the end of the season. Ryan's gonna play his look, acoustic guitar look, for just, us. He's been really working on his calluses uh, and getting that calypso strung. I strung, told you, you I was the, playing guitar in confidence. I told you I was playing it for therapeutic purposes, just to just watch the world disappear. Not yeah. not for performance. Yeah. You know, and then uh, what? And you take that information and then you just you just you spew it out to the whole internet. And here's what I'm saying right now. I don't uh, not want to play guitar because it's uh, some kind of uh, false sense of modesty. I don't want to play the guitar because I'm truly bad at it, like very bad right well, now. Well, I, I've only played for a month and I haven't had, I haven't had much time working so much on these cases. I don't have a lot of time for myself. Anyway, everybody sent us a lot of really nice fan art. Some people also sent in some great videos of them playing songs about Unsolved. And we've got one of those now that we'd like to share because yeah. it's very good. Hashtag Bugara Guitarra that opened up for other Bugaras out there to play the guitar. Yeah, not, not yeah. Me. No Shaney X. And not me. And not you, but not yet. Not yet. No, no not, me. not me. Not me. I can, can do it. I once again can hear you. Once again can hear you. Let's roll it's a clip. It's going to be incredible. Let's roll a clip. So you ask me. Hey, ghost, are you dead? And I answer Spaghetti instead According to your radio You went to a priest and sought holy water You freaked over voices and cried Heavenly Father, you stayed overnight in a house You shot a burrito couch And now you're tired of stories about hot dogs Scared the wits of ghoulish dialogue And now I gotta explain my absence Where it remains Unsolved Unsolved According to your radio <laughs> That's good. That's good. It's, it's really well done. Yeah. Uh, uh, far greater than anything I could possibly achieve. Uh, she had rhythm. She had a great voice. 
uh, instrumentation was great. Yeah. Everything was great. Uh, I'm proud to have you on the Bugara team. Ain't that sweet. What do we got coming up this week, Brian? Uh, ooh, this week, hmm. It's an international case, I could say that. Oh. It's probably this country's most famous case. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, man, it's a tale. What a yarn this one is. It's really something. Uh, well, that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page and maybe you'll be on the next episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem on our new channel, the BuzzFeed Unsolved Network. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to that, uh, link is just right here. Just do it. And just hammer the hell out of that, just that link. Just break your right? mouth. Yeah, yeah, just, just break like, it. Yeah, 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 there you go. yeah. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome to you to the part of the show we call the Hot Dog, a Hot Dog Saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara. You just give me a breath, me just give me a breath, give me a breath, give me a breath. Every single give me a breath. if you don't like it, you can kiss my apple just let me Just let me just get like a, just like a breath. Just gonna need to prepare myself for the dumb shit I'm about to hear. Okay. Previously on the Hot Dog, a lot happened. Watch the episodes. <clears throat> a beautiful tropical island, dappled sun falls onto the face of a peach named Joblet. Relaxing on the sandy shore, his brows are something else, baby. <clears throat> a more ideal situation I can scarcely conjure. The life of a peach, who can beat it? He takes a sip from his pina colada. From the tropical brush, a holler. Uh, uh, hey, Pops. Mm, Garce, my boy. Garce, a young peach, runs up to his father. Behind him, a lady peach. Garce, why did I tell you about troubling your father during his rest times? No, oh, Murga, that's all right. The boy is very good. He'll have my eyebrows one day. Oh, you really think so, Pops? Mm, I'm like 40% sure. I guess it's hard to say. Jeans are funny like that. I guess your mother doesn't have very good brows, so who knows, quite honestly. <laughs> well, you can't blame me for that. I'm dead. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, don't you recall, Joblet? I was blown to smithereens on that transport ship during the Chili Wars. You buried my pit. <laughs> yeah, she sure is dead. Wake up, Dad. What? No, no, that can't be. Wake up, honey. N no, I won't believe it. My brows are still immaculate, but you can't, you can't be. I said wake up, you bum. Joblet wakes with a start on the brig of the starship Minestrone, surrounded by a charismatic, tough-as-nails holographic corn, a cocky flying ace chicken, and Smeech. Um, ah! Oh, oh, boo-hoo-hoo! Don't hurt me, please! I never meant to lead you astray. Can it, produce? We're not here to hurt you. No, see, that's what separates us from you. According to the corn, anyway. Sure, if I had it my way, I'd peck at you all the way down to your pit for what you did to me, but it ain't about what I want. What do you, just check to see how much more is left. Oh, quite a bit. Um, Whee! That's Smeech. Uh, oh, Smeech, good thing, you, I, I wasn't sure. Do you remember him? No, I don't care. Oh, he's really good, he's a fan favorite. The doctor's right, we're not here to hurt you, and I think that's evident considering we just let you take a three hour nap. Oh, that was three hours? I told you to wake me up after 10 minutes. No wonder I'm groggy. I'm gonna pluck out all my feathers and shove them down your throat, I swear to God. No, oh, please, no, oh God, oh no, my brows, whoa. Doctor, some restraint. Listen, Peach, the doc's a little peeved because you ruined a large portion of his life. That's only fair. But seeing as I set him free, he's promised to leave you untouched so long as you help us find our friends. No, oh, you mean Jean and Mike Soup? The starship Minestrone shudders as her system blinks violently. Don't you even utter his name or I'll suck your ass out my airlock, you fuzzy fraudster. Oh no, what was that? Well, okay, that was the, the ship. She, she was very close with Mike Soup. Listen, everyone on this ship, except for maybe Smeech, Whee! we all want you dead, including me. But I'm, gonna let that, I'm not gonna let that happen so long as you take us to our pals. So start talking. Oh, okay, okay. They're en route to the Onion Station Space Buffet. The luxury space station vacation destination? I almost bought a timeshare there before the war. Nice property, good square footage. Why didn't you pull the trigger? Cold feet? I don't know. I was an egg. Look, all I know is the Dark Master instructed us to bring them there. That's all I know. I swear. I swear on my brows. Well, your brows are, your, well, your brows are turds now, FYI, but I'll take your word for it. Minestrone, set a course for the Onion Station. Baller. The Minestrone powers up and zap. 
What awaits our intrepid heroes at the Onion Station? How are Gene and Mike doing? And Lil Pam? What's the Dark Master's deal, anyway? All will be revealed this season on the Hot Dog -a Showdown at the Space Buffet, only on Bun. Bun is the name of the network now, so it really ties in quite nicely to what, the, what this is all about. You have any questions? 